Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Moritz, I am one of the Definity community admins and today I am going to walk you through the calculator example you can find in the uh, SDK documentation under sdk.definity.org and let's start. I created a folder called Definity for all my SDK, uh, for all my DFX uh, projects and we will start by creating a new project. And this is pretty simple. Ah, of course, at first make sure you have DFX installed. You type in DFX minus version and currently I'm on 0 0.4.9, which is the latest version. And to create a new project, you have to type DFX new and I will call this CAC you later. Awesome. And I will head into my created newly created folder, which is currently called calculator, and I will list the files. So right now you can find a readme, you can find the dfx.json config file, and you can find a folder called source, which contains the source files. So let's explore this. So dfx.json is our configuration file. It specifies, for example, the version of your application, the dfx version you use, the canisters inside your project. Currently, there's only our template canister hello, and the path to the main function, which is currently source hello. And then the file is called main.mo. MO stands for Motoko. The Definity programming language we're going to use. And down here you have your output path, which currently points to canisters. And you do have some stuff for the front end. You can specify your port and from where to serve the front end, which is currently not important for what we are planning to do. So, first thing I want to do is change the configuration file. I want to rename my canister to calc and I actually also want to change the path and I want to call this calc and I want to call this calc underscore main. And also I want to change my output directory to dist. So let's save and quit. As you can see, everything's saved. So what I have to do now is actually reflect those changes inside my dfx.json um, file in my uh, yeah, project structure. So I have to rename the previously named hello folder to calc and the previously named main um, file to calc underscore main. So this is what I'm going to do next. So I will type mv for move source hello to source calc. And then I will change the directory to source calc. And as you can see, the Motoko file in there is still named main.mo and we will rename this to um, Oh, no, yeah, main mo to calc underscore main mo. And to make sure that our changes um, took effect and we did everything correctly, I will now try to build this project. And as you can see, everything works like a charm. I build it, and now we can start with the actual file and project. So let's head to source calculator or calc in this case, and then calc underscore main.mo. This is the file that contains our um, entry point to the project, I would say. And right now it contains dummy code. This is the template you get every time you create a new project with Definity or with DFX. And right now there's a very simple function there defined. It's a function called greet. I can pass an argument called name which is from the type text and it will return a text to me and it's an asynchronous function and down here there's a string 
and this uh, I think it's called Shebang uh, character is the concatenation um, operator in Motoko and I will just concatenate the hello string with my name argument and an exclamation mark and then I will return this to the person or to the call of the function. So we will overwrite this and begin our new program and we will call our actor calc. So first thing we are going to do is we are going to define a variable called cell and this variable has the type integer and it's initiated with a zero. So cell will contain our values. So let's define some functions. First we want to define a public function called add. This function takes an uh, integer and it's an asynchronous function and it will also return an integer and this one is pretty easy. We take our cell and say it should be plus equal to n and then we will return our cell. So our next function will be subtract and this will also take a, an integer as an argument. It's also asynchronous and it will also return an integer and this will take our cell and minus equals n and return cell. So the next function is going to be multiply or we just call this mal and it will also again take an integer it will return an integer and this one is also pretty straightforward All right. the next one is going to be a little bit more complicated this is the divide function this will also take an integer it's also asynchronous but here we will also um, handle the case that we will return a null value instead of an integer. So by putting an exclamation mark in front of an integer, this basically says that you can either get an integer or the null value. So first of all, let's test if the value that's being passed to us is zero because as we all know you can't divide a number by zero so we should check for this special case so what we do is we ask or we better we say if n is equal to zero we will return null and else we will divide our cell by the value n and return our cell. So let's close those curly braces. Alright, awesome. So I am going to define another function which is going to be the modulo function. This also takes an integer, it's also asynchronous and it also returns an integer and, and we will do an in place modulo with n and return our cell. The next thing we are going to do is in place exponenti exponentiation and we will call this exp and we will take an integer again a synchronous function returns an integer and we take our cell to an in place exponentiation with n and return our cell so now we are going to define a function that is going to be called cell and this is also asynchronous 
and it will return an integer. Or let's say it will return either an integer or a null because... Oh no, 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 this can't be. That's okay. So, uh, function cell which takes no arguments, returns an integer, and yeah, this just returns our cell. And the next thing we are going to do is define a clear all function that also takes no arguments and it will simply clear our cell. So again we need an if statement. So if our cell from the type integer is not equal to zero we will do an in place subtraction from cell minus cell which will lead to zero and in the other case if it's zero we will just return return our cell so all right, that should be it, actually. Let's see if we can build this. No, we can't. Duplicate definition for cell in block. So this says line 16 and character 14 to line 16 character 18 so line 16 character 14 Let's try it like this no duplicate definition for cell and block Why is this a duplicate? Ah, okay, it's probably because um, my function name. I will call this. What's a good name? Mm, current value, maybe? Yeah. Should be okay. Whoops. Current value. Alright, awesome. So next up we are going to start a local internet computer client in the background so we can test our application by deploying it to the net, uh, local network and you can easily do this by type in defect start and this starts our client. Oh, one thing I forgot, you should start it in the no, wait, let's go for stopping it first and then we go for defix start minus minus background so you don't have a terminal window occupied by the client and it will just run in the background if you use the background flag. Alright, awesome. So let's install our canister. We do this by type in defects canister canister install oh yeah defects canister install calc and we just installed our canister called calc so next we're going to test the functions you do this by typing in defects canister call you specify the name of your canister which is calc and then we specify the type of the argument we are going to pass, it will be an IDL, our type will be the interface description language. Then we will specify the function we are going to call, which is going to be for the simplest case just add. And then we specify the value. And the value will be, let's say, 5. And as you can see, it returned. So let's try.
try something more complicated. Let's try and multiply this by 10. Our expected output is, let's say, 50. Looks good. Awesome. So now we will call current value. And we have, of course, no type because this one takes no arguments. And this should be 50. Awesome, 50. Now let's try clear all, which should clear our cell. So it should return zero. Great. All right. Then let's try subtract. So right now our current value is zero and we will subtract 10 from zero. So we, sh we should end up with minus 10. Works like a charm, awesome. Let's try a negative number. So we are subtracting minus 10 from minus 10, which should lead to zero. Let's try. Perfect, awesome. So let's keep it like this. Plus 10. And now let's multiply this with a very big number. This is big. All right. Now we created an overflow. Cool. So the number was too big. Let's try to something smaller. Looks good. All right. Let's use the modulo operator. And let's go. Awesome. So let's add again. Let's say maybe something like this. So this is 91 and 91 modulo 9 should lead to 1. This works too. And now let's try the exponent. So this should lead to 1. Perfect. So as you can see, Everything works like we expected. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to reach out. Also, if you are looking for an invitation to our currently not completely open to the public um, discourse, you can just drop a comment or um, write me a message or something. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time.